Welcome back guys to a very special Tip Off Tuesday. It's hard to believe that this is our 20th episode. We have had a ton of fun drawing everything from a great white shark named Bruce, to the African wild dog, to our poison dart frog. And those are just to name a few. We have drawn everything using the three layered method. And that my friends, is what this episode is all about. <laughs> I love apples. <laughs> now the three layered method is something that we have glossed over in other videos, but thought that this episode would be the perfect time to go over exactly what that is. Our muse for today will be the delicious apple. The goal today is to teach you guys the fundamental principles of the three-layered method. Let's go. All right. So the tools that I'm going to use are just a normal pencil, a soft charcoal, a medium charcoal, a hard charcoal, my favorite mono zero eraser, a number two smudger, and last but not least, brush. Now, this is the apple that we're going to draw, and I'm going to show you the difference between doing one layer of charcoal versus two layers of charcoal, and then of course, inevitably, our three layered process. So let's get to it. So just like with any drawing, we are going to start with the basic outline. So when it comes to drawing anything, doesn't matter what it is, doesn't matter if it's an animal, an object, like this apple here, always start off with an outline. Now the outline doesn't have to be perfect, but what the outline serves as is a guide, more or less, for you when you start throwing down your actual charcoal. And outlines can be changed. I change my outlines on just about every single piece that I do, and I'm glad that I do because, I mean, if you got it right the first time, every time, you know, how boring would that be? It's like, why would you do it? If you're not growing, you're not progressing, so. Here. And then another thing too that you can do when it comes to your outlines that I do is sometimes I'll actually draw the outlines of shadows just as kind of like I said again a guide. Here, there's a shadow that comes in here. I'm gonna take my bite out of my apple. I love apples. Very good and healthy for you. And then of course we have the we have the stem here. Something like that. Pull it up here. There it is. Little baby stem. All right. So first what we'll do, we'll start with our soft charcoal. And we'll go on the inside here. This is where I began my line for my shadow. So I'll just very lightly, and I'll hold my my soft charcoal pencil sideways. I'll just very put a put a very light layer of charcoal down. Because remember what we're going to do is we're going to take between our smudger and our brush, we're actually going to be pushing this layer of soft charcoal down into the paper. And so we don't need to do we don't need to lay it down hard, just barely touch it. The effects will come. Remember, with this method of drawing with charcoal, it is much like painting in the sense that we are doing it in layers, layer after layer. And that's why I always say, if you're not happy with the initial layer, don't worry about it because you can always create more effects to whatever it is that you're drawing when you introduce your medium charcoal and your hard charcoal. Remember what we said in our charcoal types and differences video that we came out with a couple months ago. 
a hard charcoal will stick to a soft charcoal. And the reason why that is is because the medium charcoal has more binder in it from the factory, from the manufacturing process than the soft charcoal does. That's why it's uh, consistency is different compared to the soft charcoal. Soft charcoal spreads very, very easy. You'll find that medium charcoal it, with this method doesn't tend to spread nearly as easy. And then of course the hard charcoal hardly spreads at all. And that's just because there's more binder in it, which is just a fancy way of saying like glue that holds all the charcoal particles together. So just be aware of that. A lot of times you'll find with charcoal that you don't even necessarily need to draw lines. All you have to do is play with the amounts of charcoal. There we are. So now what we'll do, is take our brush, we'll go ahead and hit it. And what we're essentially doing is we are pushing the charcoal into the grooves in the paper. Now this will vary depending on what kind of paper it is that you enjoy drawing with. But I have found through trial and error that mixed media paper that you can get at just about any arts and crafts store works the best for this method. And that reason why is because the, the consistency of the paper is just, it just works. It works very, very well. So we'll just push this in, something like this but sometimes your brush just will not give you uh, enough of an effect that you need as far as smoothing out that charcoal. So what we'll do is we'll come in here with our number two smudger. We'll go ahead and we'll get a, little, get a little bit more aggressive with it. And as you can see, we're able to push that charcoal into the paper a little more. That is giving us that, that soft look that we're going for. And then you can also take this smudger, rather than using the charcoal pencil itself and you can actually start smudging and bringing that initial layer into other parts of your drawing if you wish just a neat little trick and also if you know that there is a dimension to your reference that you're looking at say with this apple we know that the top goes this way it goes it comes up the side and then it goes in to the stem make sure you follow that follow that contour line and then here it comes out so that charcoal is going to come straight out right straight from this line straight out just like that remember this is just the uh, initial layer so it doesn't have to be perfect not at all if you want more charcoal you can come over here and grab this and then check this out all of a sudden you have more charcoal in your smudger Pull it down, something like this. And remember, white space is your friend too. A lot of people don't don't use white space to their advantage. Some of my earlier pieces that I used to do uh, when I was in high school, um, I never really understood that concept, and so I would always go a little bit too hard, and I would cover up a lot of my my white space, and I wouldn't see the value in it until it was a little bit too late, but hey, that's what drawing's all about. It's all about learning, it's all about progressing, it's all about trying different things. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to have it all figured out. That would be boring. Probably wouldn't draw anymore if I had it all figured out. I always want to be learning. There's so many different techniques, this is just one of many great techniques that, that will work. Okay, so that is one layer. As you can see, your eye is not picking up much of a difference, much of a variance. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to go in with our medium charcoal. And this is where we're going to start having some fun. Now, like I said, the medium charcoal has more binder in it than the soft charcoal. And it's because of that fact that it's not going to want to spread as easy. So when it actually applies off of the pencil and onto the paper, it's going to hold its form a little bit more than the soft charcoal will. And that's just because the particles themselves are um, sticking and holding together because of uh, that binder that I mentioned um, earlier. But this is, th this will play into your strengths because now that you have your soft charcoal laid down, you barely have to touch it and that charcoal is going to pop. And the reason why is because it already has that, that charcoal foundation beneath it. And so your eye will pick up those different layers. And not only that, but your apple will pop better. It'll have greater dimension than say if you were just to do one layer of charcoal. And one layer of charcoal is not bad, but in the method that I like to use, three layers I find is much better than one, especially if it's, uh, you know, effects and realism that you want to go for with your charcoal. Here, and then just kind of let your, on the edges here, where the skin of the apple ripped off from me taking a big bite out of it. Just go ahead and kind of let it go, let it go goofy. Here we are, a little piece of skin hanging off there. There we are. Bring this up. Right, pull that down, there we are. And then a lot of times, I will use either medium charcoal or I will use hard charcoal for my outlines. And every drawing is gonna be a little bit different. For something like this, here where the stem's at, I'll probably just use some medium here. And then the hard charcoal, I like to use for the outlines. Last week when I did the bug, I was telling you guys how I like to use the hard charcoal for my outlines. And with this method, you can definitely see why. So another quick trick, I just thought of it. When, uh, when you're doing your outlines on anything like this, if you actually come up and then you let off. A lot of times this will give something a little bit more dimension if you don't finish this line. A little trick that you can use. So we've come up here. So that's with our hard charcoal. Take our medium charcoal, continue to dress this up. Like this. Okay. We found that this three layer technique is wonderful for giving anything that you're drawing just that much more detail. And it's it's fairly simple as well. It's, it's not anything that would take you any more time. It's just overall, um, just overall just gives any drawing that you're working with just more depth. A lot of times when it comes to drawing, i found the more depth something has, typically the more it pops and the more appealing it is to the human eye. See if this has kind of like a crescent in it, you just go just like that, sort of caved in, or I took a bite out of it. Crevices, 
Now notice how I'm not putting any soft charcoal here. I'm just doing medium charcoal. And you can do that as well. It's, it's not like you have to put soft charcoal absolutely everywhere and then medium and hard. Use your best judgment. Your drawings are, are yours. This is just a, a method that you can use when it, when it suits you, whatever it is that you're drawing. Something you can keep in your, your back pocket for when the need arises. And then here we go. This is the fun part. So now on the top here, remember how I always said to make sure that you keep keep in mind where your where your white space is and the actual flow of whatever object it is that you're drawing. This is very much the same way. Very much the same way. We have our layer of medium. Now we want our layer of, well, we have our soft layer and now we want our layer of medium as well. Now up on the bottom here, it's going to be a lot darker than say the top is. All the contour of the apple. Apples are a great thing to practice on too. You should always practice. I practice all the time. I'm always drawing something in my sketchbook. And typically it's apples. Because apples are good. And they're healthy for you too. There we are. And of course you have your brush. Oh, oops, dropped my brush, but we're back. All right, cool. All right, so you can take your brush here and the brush is meant to soften your charcoal. It's meant to give things a nice soft look. And you don't always have to use a brush. If, if you're drawing something and it, and it needs, needs that, uh, that more coarse look and finish, then go ahead and Leave the brush at home. Don't use it. If it needs to be a little bit more intense, you just come up here, use that smudger, and that will darken this up. I used to work on cars a lot with my dad when I was when I was younger, and one of the things that he would always say to me is that a mechanic is only as good as his tools and I find that when it comes to charcoal art a lot of times you're limited by the kinds of tools that you have because different tools will enable you to get effects on the paper that you just couldn't get without them and so I always like to say that a charcoal artist is very much only as good as his tools and just like anything if it's something that you really enjoy and you want to get better at it invest in it you know make sure you have the tools that are gonna help give you success the tools are meant to they're meant to help you they're not meant to hurt you they're meant to help <laughs> A lot of times when it comes to white space, you can go in with these smudgers and you can add all sorts of dimension and press of your finger. Okay. And then that looks good, right? much more dimension we have an outline of hard charcoal as well and now the detail sesh with the hard charcoal always try to finish your pieces off with a hard charcoal because here this apple has lots of little little details freckles on it on its skin 
You can go through with the hard charcoal and you can outline that. Or you can do something like this and you can use your Mono Zero Eraser and a neat little trick you can add by taking away. Just go in and a lot of times I'll just, once I take some charcoal off, sometimes depending on how intense the charcoal is, how thick it is, if you go to erase a handful of times, you'll have a buildup. You just take your finger, boom, just like that. And you have a nice clean eraser head to work with. You can go in here and you can take charcoal off like that if you wish. Anything like that. See that? Just like that. It was that easy. Boom. A little here, a little here, a little here. Something like that. You can go in and you can actually add detail into charcoal that you've already laid down. <sighs> Something just like that. Do that all the time. There you are, you have that. That's the thing about it. <sighs> what charcoal charcoal is extremely forgiving, especially if you have the right tools. <sighs> There's not too many things that you can't do. Take that hard charcoal, and just go in, and just hit all the spots that need, that need a little more, a little more detail. A lot of times when it comes to white space, a little trick is if you actually highlight the white space, something like that, you can actually make that white space pop by simply highlighting it. Because by putting the charcoal around the white space, the hard charcoal around the white space, what you end up doing is you end up highlighting that white space for the eye to pick up. And if you mess up, don't worry. As I always like to say, that's what erasers are for. And here you can even put hard charcoal in the darkest areas on the bite. And you can actually use the hard charcoal to highlight certain parts in the dark area on this particular drawing as well. So that's it guys. Those are the fundamental principles of the three-layered method. So, try it out, let us know how it goes, and we will see you guys next week. That is it. That is all I got for you guys this week. As always, if you guys like this video and you guys dig what we're building here at Messer Creations, be sure to like and subscribe, hit that little bell, Ding! So you guys can be notified when our next video comes out. My name is Brayden. You guys have just been tipped off. I hope you guys had fun, and I will see you in the next one.